Hi everyone, it's Laurel here. I just wanted to show you a real quick video showing you how I made this background right here. Um, it's super easy and it's a distress ink technique that I learned long ago and was reminded of it um, on the uh, online card class, the holiday workshop class, which I highly, highly, highly recommend. I'm getting so many ideas and so much inspiration, learning so many things that I didn't know uh, from that class. So um, it's already underway, but you can take it at any time. I'll be sure to link it up on my blog post, but I just wanted to show you real quick how I made this background because it's so easy. Um, I'm going to do it with a different color so I can duplicate this card. But um, anyway, this technique is only going to work with distress inks because distress inks reacts with water. So I've got this squeeze lemonade distress ink, and then I've got my Hero Art Starburst background. I store all of my stamps in these little bags to protect them, but it's the Starburst background by Hero Arts. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just ink up this cardstock. This is just regular Nina Solar White cardstock. And I'm just going to apply the ink directly to the page, to the cardstock. And this is the Squeeze Lemonade. This is from one of the seasonal distress ink pads, but uh, since then Simon Says Stamp has released um, them individually, so you don't have to buy them in the pack, which is good because uh, I like the other colors that came with this set, but it, they just weren't something that I needed, so I never bought it. So as soon as they were released individually, I jumped at the chance. So I've inked up the card base with my Distress Ink, and here is my stamp. This is just a Mini Mister by Ranger, and I'm just going to spray it really good with my water. And then I am going to press my cardstock directly over the water. This is just a cloth I have. Just press down. You could probably use watercolor paper too, but I use regular cardstock for this card, so and you can see the water just soaking through. And then you get a really pretty whoops background right here. And I like that you get a lot of the splotchiness as you can see from the orange from the water too. It really adds a great look um, with such a super easy technique. So I'm just going to set this to a side to dry and you can also zap it with your heat gun if you want. All right, I just zapped it with my heat gun real quick and then you have this, this really fun, um, super easy background to make. Um, and it gives you a lot of texture from the water. You could do the water flicking technique and just take some water on your finger on a paintbrush and flick it onto the paper um, if you wanted, but I'm pretty satisfied with how it looks. So I just cut a piece of textured cardstock, and to be honest, I, I don't know who makes this cardstock. This might be Stampin' Up, but I'm not sure. Um, and I'm going to adhere it. You can see that my paper, because I heat set it, it's kind of uneven, but when I go to apply it to the cardstock, I'm going to flatten it. Another thing you can do is just lay something flat over the top, a book or something like that, and it'll flatten over time as well. And I'm going to actually make this little section over here, and this card I kept it in the corner, but this card I'm going to keep it one layer for mailing, because there's somebody in specific I'm going to send this to who just lost a parent. And um, And you just smooth it out. Super easy. And this is the Glue Glider Pro. Um, I really like this. It's smaller than a standard ATG gun, and I have a small craft space, so I don't want a huge gun. But the refills are super easy, too. You just take them out and push them in. And they also have a new feature where you can, depending on which way you put it in, here's the pull feature, and I tend to pull when I'm running adhesive, but if you flip it the other way around, you can push up um, if, if that's how you like it. But I tend to always pull, so I leave it on pull, but it's, it's a nice option. Um, now, because I'm going to keep this one layer, I'm just going to stamp my sentiment directly onto the card instead of using this banner. This banner is from Simon Says Stamp, and it's linked up on my blog, but they're super fun. You can adhere them any way you want. I adhered mine close together so it would pop up off the page, but you could adhere it the little arrows you know, further apart, and it would set more flat. 
but I thought that that was kind of fun. A little fun spin on a thinking of you card. But for this, I'm keeping it real simple. I'm grabbing this stamp set by Hero Arts. Whatever it's called. What's it called? Truly appreciated. Need to label my little baggie. And I'm just going to do sending, sending you lots of hugs. Excuse me. Sorry about that. And I'm just going to pick it up with my stamp press, which I love. I'm going to ink it up with some VersaFine ink. And again, I'm keeping this flat and pretty much one layer because I am going to mail this. And I think I'm just going to set it off, offset it. Ooh, I see I didn't do a good job inking down towards the bottom. Another reason why I love clear stamps so much. And with the Fisker stamp press, you can pretty much line it up however you want before pressing down, before locking in what you're going to do. And just like that, you have a very simple uh, card with a really fun background that those that aren't in the industry will think, gosh, how is how they do that? Uh, so anyway, that's that. So I just wanted to show you real quickly. The darker the color, obviously, the more effect that you'll get. If you did like purples or something like that, um, it would be super fun too. So thanks guys so much for watching. Have a great day.